Hello, everybody. Welcome to the final lesson of unit one for parallel and perpendicular lines. We did a whole bunch of review with slope, slope intercept, point slope, standard form, changing all of them into slope intercept form. And you need all that for parallel perpendicular lines, as you saw this week. We've been taking lines. We've been looking at slopes just to see, compare them if they're the same, they're parallel, if they're opposite reciprocal, and they're perpendicular. We've done that. Um, we graphed them. We looked at graphs. We did all kinds of good things. And we really did a lot. Uh, but for parallel lines, right, on a graph, as you can see by the red and blue line there on the graph, they do not touch. They do not intersect. They just stay right by each other. Best of friends all the time. Good things. They're always there for one another, but not interfering. That button in. We mind our own business. Uh, and you can see from the yellow circles where the slope is the same, right? The notation for parallel right there, the two lines next to each other, uh, it is parallel, just like two lines next to each other in the drawing. We talked about that. And then perpendicular, on the other hand, they cross at a 90 degree angle. When you have them, they intersect perfectly. And in fact, they intersect so perfectly, right? They kind of make, if you were to draw it on there, an upside down T because a plus sign is already taken in that part. So they got an upside down T. That is the symbol for perpendicular lines. Uh, you can see on the graph, it's a little tricky actually to see on the graph if it is a perfect perpendicular line, but you can see from the circled slopes, two thirds circled in purple and negative three halves circled in orange from the left and the right on the top there. You can see that the slopes are opposite reciprocal. One is positive and one is negative. They have opposite signs. And two thirds versus three halves, they're literally flips of the flips of one another. And that flipping, that's the mathematical term reciprocal. It means you flip the fractions. So two thirds, negative three halves, that's how you identify perpendicular ones. Uh, and we did a few days, three days worth of practice activities and exploration with GAC to try to try to really cement that idea in that uh, parallel has the same slope and perpendicular has that opposite reciprocal. So now what we're going to do is we're going to first off figure out how I'm going to see that second example. Um, will I be able to move things down somewhere or to the top maybe? I'm going to figure it out. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to take this and I'm going to write real quick um, negative six, negative nine, just so it's there. And then when this goes back, uh, now, now I don't have to worry about it because there. Now I know what that point is and I don't have to worry about it. All right, so now what we're going to do is we have pre existing equations. If we want to write an equation that is either parallel or perpendicular to it. This is finally that, that standard for geometry is what we've been building to for the last three weeks. And this is where we're going to do it here today. Uh, starting with purple, I guess we'll go to the first one. So on page 11 of your notes, I believe is where this is. If you go to page 11 on the top, it's number three for guided practice. We're going to do half of these and then you guys don't have to worry about the rest because your practice is actually be 12 and 13, those pages. Uh, but for, for, for us here, we're going to take pre-existing equations, and we are going to make lines that are either parallel to them or perpendicular to them. That's what we're going to do. So in the case of A, right, we've got, uh, we're going to make things perpendicular. In C, we're making things parallel. I think we'll start with parallel. Parallel is a little simpler, so we're going to start with example C down there. Uh, we're going to try to make a line that is parallel to this. Now, you might be sitting there going, oh, but, but what's parallel? Parallel has the same slope. And in this equation down here, we need to find out what the slope is. But our new equation has that same slope. That's literally that simple. So we need to change this equation from standard form to slope intercept form. And when you close your eyes, you need to remember slope intercept form looks like y equals mx plus b with the y all by itself. So the y term needs to be alone. We have a 3x, a positive 3x. We need to undo it. We need it gone. So the opposite of a positive 3x is a negative 3x. We're going to squeeze that in between the equal and 12 on the right hand side so that it becomes a uh, slope intercept form. So that's going to go away. We're left with 4y is negative 3x plus 12. Okay. 
And now we need y all by itself. It's four times y. We need to undo that. So we are going to divide by four. Oops, get rid of the four in front of y. And on the other side, we'll divide everything by four as well. So this leaves us with y equals negative three fourths x plus something like four is three. So this is our equation in slope intercept form. Why do we do this? Because we need a slope. We need to make an equation that is parallel to this equation. Means it needs to have the same slope. Well, we got a slope. Our slope, which I'll put in black just so we can all see. It. The slope that they gave us is negative three fourths. We can all agree on that, right? Because that, that was right there. That's negative three fourths. We need to write the equation of a line in slope intercept form that passes through the point negative six comma negative nine and is parallel to that line they gave us, which is three x plus y equals 12, or in slope intercept, y is negative three fourths x plus three, right? Same line, just written differently. We got the slope, so we know we need to have that slope as parallel. And they told us what point to use. This is x1, y1. They gave us one point. So you can plug all this in and get an equation in point slope form, right? And that's all you gotta do. You put it in point slope form, you're gonna get an equation of a line. So here we go. Um, this equation of our line in point slope, y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. Y minus Y1 will be Y minus negative 9, because Y1 is that. Equals your slope, negative 3 fourths parentheses, X minus X1, that is X minus negative 6. This is my equation in point slope form. That's not what they asked us for. We want to write an equation in slope intercept form. So this is what we've been building to. We've got an equation. We got a slope. We got a point. We got point slope form. This is literally everything we've been doing for the past two weeks all together here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change this to be in slope intercept form. And here we go. In order to make it slope intercept, we need to simplify the right hand side. We're going to distribute over there. This will become y plus nine equals negative three fourths times x. That's negative three fourths x. Negative three fourths times six. Negative three times six is negative 18. Negative 18 divided by four. I don't actually think that works out, right? Negative 18 divided by four doesn't, but you can take a two out, right? So that'll become negative nine and a half. So we can just write minus nine half over there, right? That, that would work. That's okay. We can do that. Um, and now we have to get everything onto one side, right? We have a nine, which is just lovely. But the nine, we can't subtract nine from negative nine half. That doesn't work. That's not what we're going to do here. We need to change that nine so that it is, um, it is something we can work with. Nine is going to end up being rewritten uh, as an over two fraction. So right now we've got nine over one. We need it to be something over two. So we're going to just multiply everything by the two. It's that little half step. So this is going to become y plus 18 over two is negative three fourths x minus nine over two. There you go. And you can simply subtract, right? We're going to simply subtract uh, the 18 halves away. It's going to be really gross. I'm so sorry. Uh, but that's math for you sometimes. We end up with y equals negative three fourths x. Um, and then negative nine minus 18 is negative 27 over two. So this is three fourths x minus 27 over two. Not pretty, but it does work, right? So that those are the steps that you got to go through for that. And um, yeah, three fourths. That's uh that's something, man. That, that is something. Uh, so that's that. That's parallel. And the answer again is in red at the very bottom. This is the slope intercept form of the line that is parallel to 3x plus 4y equals 12. If you were to graph them both, you notice already that both lines have the same slope. 
One passes through the wider steps of three. The other passes through about uh, about um, about negative 14, negative 13 and a half way down there. That's that's how that will work. And you could graph it, of course, as well. Uh, but but yeah, uh, negative 13 and a half. That's from wider step. Now we can look at the one on top. This is going to be perpendicular. And this one at least is a little nicer because this one starts off in slope intercept form. We don't have to change anything about that. Uh, so we get the slope right away. Up here in A, right, we want a line to be perpendicular, it means the slope can be opposite reciprocals. Uh, it needs to pass through, it needs to be perpendicular to y equals 1 8 x plus 2. It needs to pass through the point 1 comma negative 5, and that is your one point they gave you, x1, y1. So let's make that happen, shall we? Let's do it. So perpendicular, all right, means that the slope needs to be an opposite reciprocal. So if the slope they gave us is 1 8, right, we need to opposite, make it negative, and we need to reciprocate, we need to flip it. It's going to be negative 8 over 1. So our slope is going to be negative, please. Okay, so we've got a slope. We've got an x1, y1. Let's go ahead and make an equation out of this. So in point slope form, y minus y1 becomes y minus negative 5 equals m times x minus x1. That is x minus 1. This is your equation in point slope form. They want it in slope intercept form, though. So we're not done. We have to go through our steps and make this, and this is going to be nicer because it doesn't have fractions, but just ready for fractions, man, they're there. All right, we're going to distribute our negative eight, simplify, we always simplify before we start moving things around. So this is y plus five is negative eight times x, that's negative eight x. And then negative eight times negative one, negative times negative is positive, eight times one is eight. All right, this is much nicer, much, much nicer, all right? And now, we need y all by itself because slope intercept form again is y equals mx plus b. We need to get rid of that 5. So since they added 5, we're going to subtract 5 from both sides. And there you go. You end up with y equals negative 8x. 8 minus 5 is positive 3. This is the equation that is perpendicular to the equation they just gave us. You know that because. 1 8 and negative 8 are opposite reciprocals of each other with the slope. So that's the big thing. That's what's going on there. Um, that's what we got going on. So you guys have practice to do. You're only, and you're going to see it on class kick when you log on. You're not doing all the problems. On page 12, you're going to do number 1, A, C, and E. You're going to do number 2, A, C, and E. And here you all of number three, sorry, A, B, C, D of that. So that's 10 practice problems to do. Um, you have to write them in slope intercept form, right? Because otherwise, how would you graph it if you needed to? How would you know that the slopes are the same? I mean, you can actually, you can, you can, um, you can move it in point slope or slope intercept. The point is, when you take the EOC at the end of the year, and when you take the test next week, they can ask you for either. They can ask you for point slope, or they pass you for slope intercept. If they ask you for point slope, well, we're covered. We did that. That's the we did that in both of these cases. If they ask you for slope intercept, that's where you need to take it that extra step further with the algebra. So you really need to make sure you're on it and you're good with that. So that is that is writing the equations of parallel lines and writing the equations of perpendicular lines. You guys are working on those 10 practice problems. Whatever you don't finish will be homework, and you can work on that today. And you can work on that tomorrow if need be on Saturday and on Sunday if need be. And when we come back on Monday, we're gonna be we're gonna be starting our review for our uh, for our test coming up next week. All right, test is looking like it's gonna be Wednesday now. Uh, so that's uh, that's it, you guys. Um, I'm gonna turn it off now. <laughs>